Hey everybody, it's Jim of Anime and Educate, and today we have uh, Milton Knight, who is an artist, an illustrator, an animator, um, and uh, here he is. So Milton, thanks for coming on Anime Educated, and uh, you grew up in New York? Yeah. Is that uh, right? I, yeah. Mineola, Long Island is where I was born. Uh, let's see, I grew up in Westbury. I was always interested in drawing, never, ever since, you know, the earliest uh, anybody does it. I, I was doing uh, cartoons with a pencil or a ballpoint pen, and uh, I liked having the characters talk and move and uh, come to life. Um, I grew up with uh, animation, especially older films. Uh, eight millimeter home projection this was way before videotape and uh i was i was just fascinated uh just making these characters live and uh graphic effects composition um and i was also you know big into uh, comic books and uh daily strips i just knew that people made a living off of it and i wanted to do the same and uh grow up that way starting out doing super eight animation you did a test and i would have to take them over to kodak or wherever and wait for like two three weeks to to, to see how it came out and then get you know, get my heart broken i had subscribed to the magazine super eight filmmaker and all that so uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yes, I subscribed to Super 8 Filmmaker, too. Uh, it was a great magazine. I love the covers. You have a really interesting uh, uh, YouTube channel where you actually have music and, uh, like, really obscure animation from, yeah. like, Russia and, and other places, which I've never even seen. Before Lennon Maltons of Mice and Magic came out, they were, they were just, you know, you could hardly get any info at all. And these books would list a lot of titles from other countries with no illustrations so i was imagining what they were for for a long time and uh saw very little but then uh let's see bendazi's uh book came out which is called cartoons i think it's translated from italian but it gives a whole world history and uh, so I would like take the names and titles out of the books and I'd look them up on YouTube and a lot of times they were there and then I'd watch the films and I, you know, kind of like put them on playlists and that's how I decided, you know, what I do articles about and what not. Cause I, I do articles for uh, cartoon research, that blog as well. You kind of came up with one of the characters from, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, is that right? Uh, did... I didn't come up with a character. It was, uh, the game had already existed, and Robotnik had already existed, and uh, they were doing two versions of this game. One was, uh, you know, a dark, serious one, and the other one was, a, you know, so-called funny one. And uh, the director, Kent Butterworth, I had worked with him on my first animated job uh, on uh, Cool World, the famous bomb with uh, Ralph Bakshi. Kent Butterworth was an animation director on that. And uh, a little while later, he called me up and said, well, do you want to do this? And I said, sure. I didn't know what the duties would be, but he decided for me to uh, design that show's version of Robotnik. And uh, the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have people like when they find out you're the guy that did that are they like calling you up or hey can you talk to me or whatever uh, yeah they, they fixate on it uh i had a guy calling me for a while uh just about every day as a matter of fact and all the time on the uh the web it's like th th this is the unfortunate thing people fixate on it and uh, it was like 
that's what you were born to do to them and, and that's all you ever did one of the things that uh, shaped my feelings these feelings about net not taking the business seriously was knowing uh, some of the old people and uh, like uh, Howard Post and uh, he, he was my best friend for a long time he uh, did spooky and hot stuff uh, and uh, a comic called Anthro uh, which is fondly remembered that was from DC Comics back in the 60s and yeah yeah so I mainly knew him from comic books and I met him at uh, when I was doing uh, work on uh, the Marvel comics knock up knock off of Harvey everybody had moved over there to Marvel to do the basically the same thing and uh, I met him over there we, we we became close and uh, we didn't talk about cartoons as uh, you might imagine he he wasn't living in hot stuff uh, you know at, 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 at that time he, he just dropped it but we had other things in common and he kind of like uh, introduced me to uh, fine art and said well hey look at this and the editors I worked for they, they they didn't take these cartoons seriously at all and it wasn't 24 7 and uh, anybody who was 24 7 they think was crazy as as soon as they left their job they wanted to forget it and go on to uh, their their wives or whatever their hobbies were so I kind of grew up with that and I kind of grew up with uh, their negative feelings uh, I remember Howard Post said to me one time Milton don't become a cartoon nerd and that's what kind of got me into all these other different interests I didn't want to didn't want to do that uh, if you had any stories about Ralph Batchy or Cool World your experience on that Ralph is just about the last cartoonist left of the, of, of the producers. Uh, and uh, when, when I say cartoonist, I, I mean pure cartoonist. I mean, he's into the dailies, uh, just, he's not a pure technician. Uh, and he doesn't want to do Disney. And uh, so, yeah, I, 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 I admire that about him. He, he was pretty open. Uh, as far as interests and in accepting things, I mean, I don't, I won't put this in if you don't want. It's okay, but I know that you were involved with a hate crime, which I was yeah. like, I mean, when I read that, I was like, oh crap. Things were very tense about that time because it was just the year before that I was forced out of my place of dwelling. Uh, by a part owner in it and th that was also racially driven mm. and uh, so I was forced to leave the place and living elsewhere in LA I mean prices have skyrocketed around me so a friend uh, invited me to l uh, move to and I did and uh, I was minding my own business and here I had this you know, hate staring me in the face. Mm -hmm. And all I can say is like, uh, I've, in the last several years, I've seen human beings just, just about as low as I, I ever want to see them. I, I used to be able to uh, shrug off, uh, you know, this kind of obvious racism as being from a few nuts. And uh, now, now, now I see how prevalent it is, and it, it really has changed my outlook on life, period. One thing that I have seen is that uh, the racists, what they accuse black people and other races as doing, do themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I, I won't make a list, but a lot of it is self-accusation they uh, want to be able to uh, put any burdens or guilt or self-knowledge onto the other guy mm. and uh, it's devious I'm, I'm told it's a it's a KGB tactic mm -hmm. and uh, that's one thing 
about uh, what's gone on, it's all in Mein Kampf. Anybody with any sense of history knows what was happening. And it's like painful to be, you know, that conscious of it, see it happening, and just have to wait and see what happens. Uh, that people can't see it right in front of their faces. And the trouble with people is that a lot of people, even if they're proven wrong or erroneous, they'll dig in simply because they don't want to admit it. So it can go on and on. And I used to think there was a point with human beings where they stop and say, hey, wait a minute, this is not working. And, and now, now I see that that's not true at all. There's nothing they wouldn't do. And there's no low to which they wouldn't sink. So uh, I, I, I think in a way I was uh, protected by that with the career. I mean, uh, when, when there was what I call, what I think of as an industry, where they just needed to turn out work, and personalities didn't even come into it, if you did your work. I think at that point, I was kind of protected by that. Uh, I had a skill. It's like people accepting a black person if he's a sports figure or an entertainer. That's okay. So I got into my uh, my niche there professionally, and I, all that kind of you know stayed on the way out. But then when uh, the animation business, actually everything, comic books, everything, like started falling apart by this time, I don't have that protection anymore, that professional, I still work, but there's nothing like somebody on my case to, you know, meet deadlines or, or, or a weekly paycheck. It's, it's not a matter of supply and demand anymore. It's, it's just whether they want to deal with you or not. Is, are things going better for you now? I, I, I like my life here now. I'm glad. I, uh, don't see myself returning to either coast. I, 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 I don't see that in my future. For, for, for an indefinite time, I'm here. This, this is my home now. Now, you taught students before, right? Uh, the class is called uh, Dynamic Cartooning and Illustration. And it's uh, introducing the idea of line of action. It's posing. It's like, uh, you know, just, just putting your expression right there uh, and exaggerating and taking it too far. If, 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 if they don't want to, once they get out of the class, they, they, as far as I'm concerned, the students can do anything that they want, but I want to get them down to uh, putting their expression on paper and doing it uh, directly. Mm. So that's my class, and uh, it goes well with a lot of people. Sometimes you run into people who are afraid to, uh, they, they are actually afraid of what will come out of them, so I try to nurture that. Oh, so is that an online class? Teaching? I do it online. I actually prefer to do it online, but uh, I have done it in person at the schools. Do you have any advice for students? I'd like to say be yourself. Uh, problem is you may not be able to get hired being yourself. If you feel you want to gear in on something more commercial later, that's fine. But don't start out keeping yourself within those limits. Find out what you can't do. That, that's the thing. I, uh, if, if you're going to fill a sketchbook or whatever, try it with what you can't do yet. Don't just draw the same heads and stay in the comfort zone and, and do all the stuff you know. Try what you can't do and, 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 and you, you'll do bad drawings, but you gotta get the bad out to, to, to get to the good. And uh, don't let your mind get cobwebs. Keep it going and uh, find other interests. And look when you look at other art, uh, don't come in there with your decision made up by having read or been told stuff. Find out for yourself and, and look at what you don't like. You know, maybe, maybe you'll find something interesting in there. But uh, 
I, th I think you can learn from from everything, everything, all over, all around us. And you're working on just like commissions. It's commissions. It's paintings. Uh, I've, I've done a couple of shows here. And I've also done little advertising work. I was I, I design a mascot, and uh, I've been doing uh, you know art for uh, for this a printing company, uh, Crisp. I didn't do that on purpose, by the way. It's it's the only company I have in the place. But uh, yeah, so that that's been a lot of it. But I'm I'm very excited about painting, and I recently completed some comic book work. Uh, so that that took a while, but I am just about sure right now that I'm not going to go back to comics in any uh, you know large form again. They they just gotten to be too much work uh, for too little appreciation and and money. Hmm. What kind of paintings are, do people say? Hey, I want to want you to do this painting of this, or do they just? Hey, here's some. Just give me a painting. I I, I love your work or whatever. How does that work? It's a little of both. Uh, a lot of times I just get a suggestion, like somebody will say, well, I want a fantasy painting or a, 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 a sci-fi painting. And I, I pretty much just go from there. Uh, I've gotten uh, asked to do several celebrities. And uh, I mean, maybe, maybe you've seen, I, I, I do jazz celebrities. I did Elvis Gerald and uh, Louis Armstrong and, and Dizzy Gillespie. I like doing those. And Carmen Miranda was another request I had. And uh, sometimes, well, one time it was uh, for a Facebook friend who had another friend who had been in an accident. So uh, she had a theme, and I uh, I did it. And another time I got asked for Wonder Woman with her family, and I did that. So, yeah, it's uh, pretty much all over the place. And I, I, I've sold a, a few paintings that I had done already on the internet. They saw them there. And, uh, yeah. Okay. But experimenting with paint, just using paint, uh, I, I really dig. Right. I, I, I like getting into the uh, tactile uh, stuff, the uh, working with ink, really using it, and the same with uh, acrylic paint, which is, you know, what I use there. Uh, you have a Patreon page? Yes. Uh, it's mm. under my name, Melton Knight, at uh, patreon.com. And search for Melton Knight. And you'll find me. You'll find a lot of art. There's also uh, my menu for every place I'm on on the web. It's called meltonknightmenu.blogspot.com. And there are uh, other blogs and pages under it. Some... My, they cover my paintings and they cover my comics and uh, my, my articles, my YouTube uh, channel. Uh, and just just you'll find one for art in general, too. So it's it's all there. I want to thank you, Milton, for coming on Anime Educated and telling us all about what you where you are and who you are and all that and Thanks. telling us all about what you do. And and uh, we'll see more of your stuff hopefully later on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you okay. very much. Glad to be here. Glad, glad you are. Okay. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Milton Knight. Um, I want to thank all of you guys for uh, tuning in for the past year and uh, becoming subscribers and watching this channel grow. And hopefully in the new year, we'll have even more guests. And uh, yeah. So if you did enjoy this and you'd like to subscribe, please press that button right there. And uh, I also have some other videos. Uh, here's one right here. And uh, as I always say, that one's pretty good too. So uh, check those out and we'll see you next time next year on Animated Educated.